As an adjunct to our video on reading approach plates, we're going to cover a little bit more on procedure turns. The purpose, simply stated, is when you're approaching from the opposite direction that you want to land in, it allows you to turn around. One common procedure turn is called the hockey stick. You fly outbound from the facility, make a 45 degree angle to that path, turn around, now flying in the direction you desired, and uh, land. Another less commonly seen procedure turn is called a hold in lieu of procedure turn, which is a bit of a misnomer since it's not truly a full hold, and I do believe it's a procedure turn. Here we show uh, in some detail the hockey stick version once again. You'll see that um, if you fly outbound over an initial approach fix, in this case the Clovis VOR, maintain a sp the specified heading. Here we turn left to a heading of 266 degrees, fly outbound, make our turn, come back again at 086 degrees, and re-intercept uh, our line of flight, flying in the opposite direction. Another variation on this is uh, called the 8260 turn. The advantages here are that uh, this keeps you in a little tighter. Most procedure turns require you to maintain a certain distance from the initial approach fix, usually 10 nautical miles. In this case, you turn left, uh, it headed uh, 80 degrees from your original path, turn back around to 260 degrees, and continue your turn and re-intercept. And this is almost a perfect circle, and so there's not a lot of timing. You uh, do not have a specific outbound leg. You would simply make the circle. This is allowable even if there's a hockey stick type format. You're allowed to do uh, whatever you want as long as you remain within the distances specified for the hockey stick type procedure turn. For the St. George Municipal VOR approach on the right, note that the Mormon Mesa initial approach fix uh, states to be at 10,000 feet no PT. That means no procedure turn. You would not fly the hold in lieu of procedure turn. You would simply fly from the Mormon Mesa, turn and enter the, pa the pattern straight in. Here we're showing uh, hold in lieu of procedure turns. As I said, these are not true holds. Uh, you do not need to fly the full hold unless for some other reason you need to, such as traffic or reducing your altitude. And in some cases, at least by some people's interpretation because there's quite a controversy over this. If your normal holding pattern entry brings you in the direct uh, entry area, then you can simply hit the initial approach fix and continue on. You don't need to make any turn whatsoever in this holding pattern. You simply overfly the, in the initial approach fix and fly straight in. And the fact that it's okay to do this is supported by the 2006 rule change, which states that you can enter an approach at an intermediate fix and at that point fly straight in. You would not have to fly around the holding pattern. And since for hold in lieu of, the initial approach fix and intermediate fix are the same thing, you would simply be using an intermediate fix. If you were arriving from the northwest, that would be the teardrop entry area of a standard holding pattern and you would fly that type of turn but when you return back to the intermediate fix instead of going around the holding pattern you would simply fly straight in so once again not flying the entire pattern. Likewise in this case if you were arriving from the northeast the parallel entry of a standard holding pattern you would do a parallel entry overfly the in intermediate fix the initial approach fix originally and again fly straight in without the need to continue uh, flying an entire pattern. Another type of procedure turn is called the teardrop turn. This is not seen very often in the United States, but there are some airports that do have them and I think it's pretty obvious how they get their name because the turn itself looks like a teardrop. In this case, this approach is for the ILS or localizer to runway 14 at Dodge City Municipal. You'll also notice that this approach has two other options. 
uh, both DME arcs, uh, initial approach fix on the east side where you would fly the arc counterclockwise and one on the west side where you'd fly it clockwise to intercept the localizer. We'll cover flying a DME arc in a separate video so if it's not already up there please watch for that one to be posted. As we said earlier, we're not going to cover the details of exactly how to know what your proper bank angle should be to fly this uh, type of turn as published. But in general, uh, teardrop procedure turns require relatively modest bank angles, uh, third turn, half standard turn, or uh, something along that line. The document How to Read Approach Plates on the Elite Premier Virtual website has supplemental information on procedure turns including the information we covered today and if you take a look at the section on the teardrop turn you can see some description and the formulas that, that provide the rule of thumb for determining your bank angle uh, so grab that document it might be a little easier to read than trying to pause here and read the uh, document but I guess you could do that too so we'll fly one of the more common types of procedure turns, the hockey stick procedure turn. Into runway 30 at Merced. We actually introduced this uh, in an earlier video on VOR flying techniques. And we're a little less than 14 nautical miles outside the El Nido VOR, descending to our target altitude of 3,000 feet. And we'll describe this a little bit in just a moment, why we're using 3,000 feet. But uh, leveling off, uh, we'll take a look at the approach plate. So we're coming from the north-northwest. We'll make a turn at El Nido and intercept the outbound radial 109 degrees. Make a left turn at 064 degrees. Come back in at 244, re-intercept, fly in, and land on runway 30. Actually, this approach plate identifies this as runway 31, and we know that uh, there has been magnetic drift since FSX in 2004, and uh, if you don't have updated uh, nav and airport information, you're going to see things as they were in approximately 2004. Here we're just under 7 miles, a little bit to the left of where we want to be, so we'll nudge the aircraft over, getting ready to make our turn at El Nido. And you'll remember the rule of thumb, uh, a third of a mile turning radius for every 60 knots ground speed or your ground speed divided by 180. But uh, keep in mind here we're only going to make about a 35 degree turn, uh, 144 degrees to 109 degrees, about a third of a turn. So we won't need the full roughly one mile turning radius. Uh, we'll need only about a third to a half of a mile, but we'll add a little bit of a margin uh, for uh, safety, a quarter of a mile or so, uh, and another half a mile for our altitude above the uh, VOR. Keep in mind that you're probably better off turning a little early than late to keep your bank angle shallow, and you can uh, make a nice gentle turn and you'll have plenty of time to intercept the outbound radial to fly the approach. As we get close to the VOR, we're just a little bit more than two nautical miles away. We can switch our cursor to our desired radial 109 degrees and prepare to make our turn. And we're just under a mile and a half and we'll just start making our turn now. And uh, very gradually turning to intercept the outbound 109 degree radial to start the initial portion of our procedure turn. So at this point we're starting to fly away from the airport. We'll want to keep a small angle until we intercept the uh, the radial. Notice that the to from needle has now turned to from and soon you'll see that the split segment will begin to move towards the center. And keep in mind when you're very close to a VOR things happen very quickly and that's why you only want to have small angles to intercept the desired radial. So here we'll see that the needle starts to move and uh, we can gradually start to turn to intercept the needle flying in, into the fixed portion of the, of the needle and letting the split portion settle nicely right in the center. 
At this point we will fly outbound for about four and a half miles. Most procedure turns like this have a limit of 10 miles from the initial approach fix. Uh, if you fly for about four and a half miles, slower aircraft you could go five or five and a half miles before you make your turn, that 45 degree turn in this case to the left at to heading 0, 064 degrees as we show here. That should keep us well within the required 10 nautical mile limit from the El Nido VOR. So at this point we're almost at the four and a half mile mark and we'll just hold this heading. We're barely a degree off course which at this distance from the VOR represents only about 400 feet. So at four and a half miles we'll make the left turn to 064 degrees. You can do this using the autopilot simply turning the heading bug to 064 and it'll make the turn for you. Uh, notice that we're keeping a relatively standard bank angle here uh, between 20 and 30 degrees drifting back just a little bit to slow down now and uh, intercept our outbound heading of 064 degrees. And at this point the common wisdom is to time this for one minute but I use between 36 and 40 seconds because that gives me a little extra margin to stay within the distance limits but also put you up at a point where when you're just completing the 180 degree turn back from this heading you'll begin to intercept your inbound radial and so you can make it all one continuous process. Now I've turned the uh, cursor to the opposite of 109 degrees the 289 degree uh, heading. I'm flying outbound. We'll make a turn back uh, at between 36 and 40 seconds and I did time this one. It happened to be 38 seconds. And we'll continue our, our turn through 180 degrees at roughly the same bank angle we used. I like to use a slightly shallower angle than a standard turn so I'm holding it at about 20 to 25 degrees. Now keep in mind that uh, various things have to happen. Remember we came in at 3,000 feet and that's what you should do but when you're in pr your procedure turn you'll want to decrease your altitude to the target altitude that you would be at on final approach. You also need to set up for final. Uh, this is basically the base leg we're on and so your flaps and speed and so on would reflect that accordingly. So here we're headed back turning 180 degrees and our target as according to the approach plate is 244 degrees but you'll watch and as we approach 244 degrees because we only time this out for 38 seconds then when we get to that point the split portion of the needle will, be, will begin to move and at that point we can shallow out our turn a little bit and allow that split portion to gradually drop towards the fixed portion and intercept our uh, 109 degree radial inbound in this case a heading of 289 degrees. Once again note that we came in at 3000 feet and our target altitude here is 2200 feet so we needed to make that descent but you should make that descent during the turn and not uh, when you're flying outbound because there may be inbound aircraft. It gives you that extra thousand feet or so of separation. So we'll nudge this over slightly. We got a slight quartering uh, headwind off the nose, very few knots, not a big uh, deal, but you do have to take that into account. We'll line up onto the, uh, the 109 radial inbound, 289 degrees is our heading. And we'll hold this with the needle in the center as we prepare our aircraft on uh, final approach. I'll take a look around see my first officer is still in the blue room uh, so we'll have to fly this ourselves and you would continue to make uh, the appropriate changes for final approach uh, additional flaps uh, proper airspeed and so on depending on the aircraft you're flying a characteristic of VOR approaches is that they don't necessarily bring you exactly in line with the runway you can see here that uh, our inbound course puts us at about a maybe 15 degree angle or so from the runway. Once you have uh, visual contact with the runway you can move over and line up. 
here we'll show you what we just did. You see the uh, procedure turn and we're inbound now about to fly over the El Nido VOR inbound to Merced. And keep in mind that as we get close to the VOR we enter the cone of confusion where things happen fairly quickly. And if you start chasing the needle too much you'll find yourself well off course. So we'll try and line this up as best as we can. And in this case the usual uh, best advice is to simply hold your heading, go through the cone of confusion, and let things settle down. If you come back a little bit, we'll come back to our heading here. Notice we're configured uh, with our flaps and now dropping our gear as we start our descent. And our descent rate for this airspeed would be roughly 800 feet per minute. And we'll just hold the heading uh, and allow us to pass through the cone of confusion. And you see that the split portion of the needle is lining up uh, accordingly and we're about a mile away uh, right now. So you can make very small corrections over to the left here a little bit uh, and continue to lower our flaps. We're now at full flaps on short final. A little bit off course here, but uh, We'll correct that in a moment. It only takes a small angle to bring us back onto course because we're still very close to the VOR. Let the split portion of the needle move and then turn into it to slow it down a little bit. And You can see that things are settling in fairly nicely here. And if we look ahead we'll see the runway at a 10 or 15 degree angle to our current course. And we'll hold this heading for now until we have very uh, good visual contact on the runway. There's plenty of time to line up so there's no need to rush. You can make a nice gentle bank once you have definitive visual contact on the runway. So here we'll start to nudge over just a little bit to the left to line ourselves up and notice now we're starting to deviate from course but we have a good visual contact on the runway and we can continue in visually from here provided we've uh, got visual contact uh, at or before we reach minimums. So again, uh, coming in at a slight angle, but you can see it takes a relatively modest turn to, uh, to line ourselves up and we do exactly that. Good visual uh, contact and so we'll uh, step outside the aircraft here and take a look at how things look from there. You'll see that beautiful Elite Premier Virtual Paint. And you can see that we're moving ourselves gradually over to uh, intercept the extended center line of the runway. And we're in pretty good shape at this point. We'll come back inside the cockpit and you can see that we're nicely lined up. But some folks find it a little uncomfortable to come in at this angle, but with uh, just a little practice, I think you'll understand that it does not take much to adjust for uh, uh, the relatively small angles that this type of approach have to the extended center line of the runway. And we'll touch down here and uh, slow our aircraft down. Give you one more look at that gorgeous Elite Premier Virtual Paint on the CRJ-700 Regional Jet. And we'll take a look here at uh, what we did, we came in from the north-northwest, made our uh, turn at the El Nido VOR, and flew outbound. Remember that uh, if you take a look up here, this is the QDM function of Plan G. It shows that our maximum distance was about 9 nautical miles. Most procedure turns like this require you to stay within 10 nautical miles. Occasionally this is a different depending on the approach, but most are 10 and we were about a nautical mile within that requirement. So once again to review, coming in from the north-northwest, made our turn at the El Nido VOR, flew outbound for four and a half miles, left turn to 064 degrees. Once we finished the turn, timed it for between 36 and 40 seconds, made our turn back to 244 degrees, at which point the split portion of the needle started to move so we shallowed out and intercepted the inbound course. This being a fairly standard example of a procedure turn 
which allows you to arrive from an opposite direction of the one you want to land in, turn around very simply, and proceed back inbound and land. You can also see there's an ILS or localizer to the same runway, and uh, it would be flown similarly if we were arriving from the north-northwest. In this case, however, your initial approach fix is the coop intersection, which is also the localizer outer marker. So you would tune your ADF and fly to the outer marker, intercept the localizer flying outbound, and in this case, instead of turning left, we'll turn right to make our procedure turn, right at 168 degrees, still using the rule 36 to 40 seconds, turn back around 346 degrees, and intercepting the localizer inbound. And you can check out our ADF navigation uh, videos regarding uh, how a outer marker ADF uh, outer marker indicator can help you intercept the localizer a little more easily. Also note here our out target altitude is 2,000 feet, but we would come in at some higher altitude and during our procedure turn descend to our target altitude of at or above 2,000 feet and you would maintain that altitude until you intercept the glide slope and continue in and complete the landing. So visit us at ElitePremierVirtual.com We have uh, several things on the website that might be of interest to you. In the flight training section there is a, a document that covers in more detail reading approach plates along with some supplemental information on uh, doing procedure turns as we've covered here. And there's also several other things that may be of interest to you as you expand your flying skills, including information on flying a non-precision approach, which is what we just did here today, flying the VOR approach into MERSET. So once again, pay us a visit, ElitePremierVirtual.com.